So yeah, we're here with uh, Justin Shaw. He is the operator of the Seattle Weather Blog, and he is Seattle's premium weather Twitter account. He has a huge reach. He posts daily good information. He's got a very good, accurate um, weather database too. So he posts a lot of historical data about Seattle and the surrounding regions. And yeah, I just, I, I look forward to seeing your post each day because it's, it's very unique. I like the way you bring out data from the past and stuff and kind of show that to everybody. That's really useful, I think, kind of gets everybody on the same page and I really enjoy it. Thanks, Michael. No, it's, uh, it's, I, I love doing it. And I, I think, you know, you know, we're kind of cut from the same cloth, all of us weather nerds here, you know, like a lot of these um, major weather events of the past, you know, they're just burned into our minds, you know, and yeah. there's, you know, most people, you could tell them like, you know, December 18th, 1990, and they're going to give you a blank stare. You tell, you know, someone tells you or me that, and we're, we're just like, ah, yeah. you know, yeah. so it's, it's fun to kind of recall. That was an awesome day. That was a thunder, that was a thunder snow event that came through Seattle that year too. Yeah. Yeah. That was, oh man. Yeah. That was, it's funny. I only have vague memories because I was, uh, I was six at the time and it was kind of my first right. big exposure, you know, and oh, I do this. Impression, probably. Yeah. You're like, wow, this could actually happen in yeah. this region. What, <laughs> what is this climate capable of? I didn't, I thought this was a boring, you know, maritime, you know, 45 degree raid type of place. So. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So the inaugural day storm was probably a big deal for you then, at, right at that age where you're really soaking in all the information and whatnot too. Huh? Yeah, yeah, that's probably my first like truly hooked on weather because yeah, I, I was, what was I? I was eight, so I could yeah, I totally remembered it. You know, I had the vivid memories and just everyone, you know, like going into second grade, my classroom and there's trees down and the power's out and you know. They're like, oh, we're gonna we're gonna watch Bill Clinton swearing in. But the power's <laughs> out. What do we do? Let's send you all home. And yeah, it, it was it was pretty epic. <laughs> that was a wild day. I just remember the streets covered in green branches and just like, what is going on here? You know, this is insane. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that was that that was a beast. Um, yeah, I, I think and stuff like that just gets burned in your memory, you know. And maybe it's even. Uh, all these like classic storms we have tend to fall on holidays or important days. So, you know, it, it tends to sound even cooler in hindsight, like inauguration day storm, Hanukkah yeah, Eve, yeah. you know, and it, yeah, it just gives yeah. it that added um, hype, yeah. I guess. Hanukkah Eve <laughs> day storm. <laughs> <laughs> Which I didn't know existed before, uh, before <laughs> you know, it happened. I didn't know there was a thing called Hanukkah Eve, but you know. All right. So, um, I was going to ask what you think about, I mean, what, how do you think Seattle is going to handle us if we do get one of these extreme events that we used to get in the past? Yeah, I mean, kind of get the feeling people are going to be caught off guard, um, you know, especially, um, you know, with our population has changed so much over the past 20 years, you know, lots of people moving here from from different areas of the country, milder areas of the country. Um you know, and I think a lot of people don't realize, you know, that, you know, like in 1950 or whatever, you know, I mean, Seattle was the Arctic tundra. So I think a lot of people don't realize what this climate is capable of. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like if, uh, I guess we'll see if some of these more extreme solutions come to pass, but, you know, if we're talking four or five days with highs below freezing, uh, I mean, that's going to be a problem, you know, for our pipes and just kind of the way houses are built around here. They're not really, you know, insulated from extreme cold like they would be, you know, in, in the Midwest or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, and as you know, just looking back in the history, like this was quite a bit more common when you looked back in the 50s and the 60s had some really epic storms and the 80s had some really low temperatures in them too. And we haven't really gotten down that cold. I mean, a little bit in 2008, 2010, but not prolonged, you know, just kind of one night in each of those events. So it's, yeah, like you said, it's going to be crazy. The plumbers might be active with some pipe breaks if we spend a couple of nights around 10 degrees Fahrenheit, that, that'll be pretty nutty. Yeah, yeah, I know. It, it's, it's hard to imagine. Um, there's a part of me that, you know, it's like, is this really... It's really going to happen but then it's like it seems like 
even as we get closer, like, you know, I keep waiting for the the classic rug pull, you know, where they, they scoot it all east and we're, you know, 40 degrees with southwest winds. But it kind of seems like the models are more or less doubling down. I mean, maybe it'll moderate a bit, but it, it seems hard to believe at this point that the cold is going to, you know, miss us. Yeah, it's very similar for me for the, the heat dome. You saw these gaudy temperatures and then it's like, like this can't last these are just wild runs and it just kept coming and kept coming so it's very similar for me in that aspect where it's just like wow some of these extremes might actually happen we might get close to 10 degrees here in seattle right yeah no I, yeah i i hear you on the on the, the june stuff too you know at first we all were like you know 110 120 in the gfs that's crap throw it out you know and then a couple days later you're like Oh my gosh, this is sticking to its guns. Um, and it's funny too, because I think, you know, we're so used to, if anything, we're used to like heat waves outperforming. We're not used to cold waves outperforming. Like we're always used to them wa getting watered down. So it's it's impressive to see that that really hasn't happened. Um, and yeah, I feel like I've made several declarative tweets and <laughs> maybe I shouldn't. I, I'm still going to stand by them now, but you know, I've made several tweets, maybe even over the past years about we'll never get to the single digits again, right? We're, we're, we're never going to, you know, do what we did in February of 1989. The climate is warming, all that kind of stuff. Um, I still think it's probably the case, but some of these ball runs make me a little nervous. Like, yeah, I, exactly. Yeah, I kind of wonder that too, you know, the climate's changing a little bit and these cold domes are less steep and it's harder to get over that terrain in British Columbia and really get that air in here. So it's kind of like, I'm interested to see just from that aspect, if that will actually happen, you know, it's like, okay, is this like going to be proof that we're never going to get below 10 degrees again in Seattle or what, you know? Right. Right. Um, I don't want, it's hard for this one to, it's, it's tricky to see it, you know, if there's not a lot of snow, um, and then obviously the environment around SeaTac has changed so much too, even with that third runway. But I, you know, I guess never say never. I mean, like you said, we never would have, you know, if someone had said Seattle's going to hit 108 degrees, I would have laughed at them, you know, and it happened. So, uh, yeah, it's an exciting time. It's it's yeah. weird, man. It's it's a little weird. Well, I guess we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's it's interesting to see how much the weather community here just really picks up during a big wind event or a big snow event or thunderstorms. That's when I notice a lot of activity kind of on my Twitter feed and stuff when these events come in. So it's kind of, it's fun in that aspect too. You get to see everybody kind of come alive and come together and view everything. Right, right. No, I agree. And I think that's, um, that's kind of my favorite part about it all, you know, just um, it's, it's sort of this excitement just becomes contagious. Um, and I think, you know, you and I probably both know, I mean, I, I, there's, in my opinion, and maybe, I mean, I suppose we're biased, but I don't, it's hard to find a more snow crazed city than Seattle. Um, yeah, that's, that's true. It just goes wild here. It's, it's, it's the perfect combination of it being just rare enough, but you still can remember the last event and you kind of want more versus just getting sick of it if you live out in the Midwest or something. <laughs> Right, right. It's, it loses its magic and it's yes. not special. And, you know, even when, it, I mean, I remember I lived in Denver for a year and, you know, it would snow there and it was kind of an ugly snow, right? Because they don't have the evergreens and stuff. So it's like, you get some snow on the ground, it turns brown in a couple of days. And, you know, out here, it's like, it's magical. It's clinging to these 40 foot trees and, yeah. you know, and it's postcard perfect. It's, it's, it's just something. People love it. So that's... I hope we get snow. That's, that's got to be a bobber, I think, for all of us. To... Yeah. So what what do you think? What's your, you, you want to give a prediction on what you think is going to come here for Seattle? Just like <laughs> in the next few days. I mean, obviously, yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like I've, burned, I've been burned so many times. There's, there's what I want to predict. And then there's, there's the part of me that's like, no, that's not going to happen. Um, right. You know, I think if we're talking SeaTac, I think... I would probably go with two inches. Um, you know, if there's a convergent zone further north, I feel like someone's going to get lucky. You know, it'll probably be like Stanwood or someone. You know, they they will get like 
eight inches. Um, yeah, I would guess for most areas, an inch or two. Um, but the, I think, you know, almost certainly, you know, we know it's not going to unfold exactly as modeled and someone someone's going to be really ticked off because someone's, you know, not going to get any snow, uh, maybe in North Seattle or something. And then someone is going to, you know, probably in um, Northern Snohomish County or something, get surprised with the foot. So um, it's going to probably going to be uneven. I, you know, I bet we'll, I bet we'll all see something, but it sure doesn't look like, you know, uh, anything major um, at this point. Yeah, that's a, that's kind of what I've been highlighting in my videos too. Some people are going to get very little up and there's probably going to be a few areas that get pretty lucky potentially up north, like you mentioned too. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's tricky. Um, yeah. And there, there's always, uh, I used to think, I know the, the UW model is today made me a little more optimistic for the, uh, kind of South Sounders. I swear they're always used to be in my mind. I always thought of the, there's this sort of this snow hole between downtown Seattle and like Boeing Field, that area, because they're, you know, they're too far south to tap into the convergent zone. They're still kind of getting rain shadowed. And then from SeaTac South, you know, you tend to do better. So I, I always kind of, you know, feel bad for that area, like Georgetown or whatever. Yeah, Probably I kind of feel sometimes that's why the settlers of the past almost flock towards this place more just because it was you know they're right on the sea level there and they're kind of behind the olympic mountains rain shadow like you said it's almost that's like, actually a really good point yeah it's as if they knew i know because there's been so many times i've been like why didn't they, why didn't they you know found seattle like where Payne field is or something right. they got a little bit further north yeah. you know right in the convergence zone yeah, yeah. I, th I think yeah, i think there's something to that they're, they're smarter than maybe we give them credit for yeah exactly I mean, they spent a lot of time outside back then, so they probably were hyper aware of every single weather event. <laughs> True. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're probably tracking it, and yeah, they realized, you know, for us, it's like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live in the convergent zone, or I'm going to live at 500 feet, because that's where it's snowy. And for them, it's like, well, that's the difference between life and death, so no, I'll take my sea level swamp on the Duwamish or whatever. Exactly. So. Yeah, this is awesome. This is a great talk. Cool. Yeah. Thanks so much, Michael. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Nice yeah. to nice to meet you. I'll, I'll see you on Twitter and we'll see what comes in the next couple of days. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I know. Fingers crossed, man. Yeah, exactly. All right. All right. Awesome. All right. See you, Michael. Okay. See you.